Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an interesting discussion of the implications of the recently announced joint Chinese-Russian initiative to build a lunar outpost. With the rest of the world distracted by a still persistent COVID pandemic, China and Russia today quietly announced what could be the largest international space cooperation project for both nations. According to a statement released by the Chinese National Space Administration, on March 9th, Zhang Kejian, the administrator of the China National Space Administration, and Mr. Rogozin, the general manager of the state space corporation Roscosmos, signed the Memorandum of Understanding between the Government of the People's Republic of China and the Government of the Russian Federation regarding cooperation for the construction of the International Lunar Research Station, also known as the ILRS. CNSA and Roscosmos are to adhere to the principles of co-consultation, joint construction, and shared benefits. They are to facilitate extensive cooperation in the ILRS, which is to be open to all interested countries and international partners, and designed to strengthen scientific research exchanges and promote humanity's exploration and use of outer space for peaceful purposes. The ILRS is a comprehensive scientific experimental base with the capability of long-term autonomous operation built on the lunar surface and or on the lunar orbit that will carry out multidisciplinary and multi-objective scientific research activities such as the lunar exploration and utilization, lunar base observation, basic scientific experimentation and technical verification. This announcement is significant because it signals the rise and maturity of China's human spaceflight program and the concomitant loss of U.S. preeminence and leadership in the sphere of international space cooperation. These two fundamental developments will be the subject of this analysis. The first topic of our discussion focuses on the Chinese human space program. China's ambitious space program has reached a level of maturity and technological sophistication at a level at which Russia, still a preeminent space power, is comfortable in entering into a full joint venture with China, and this on a massive endeavor that will require significant technological exchange and cooperation. In the past, especially in the immediate aftermath of the dissolution of the former Soviet Union, Russia, while willing to sell China certain obsolete spaceflight hardware for cold hard cash, was hesitant to engage in full technology transfers that would eliminate Russia's technological lead. This is no longer the case. The continuing growth in China's macroeconomy has brought with it increased resources for China's space program. China's technology and space capabilities have arguably brought it to parity with Russian and possibly even the United States level. Likewise, Despite a de facto embargo on China by the United States and its allies since 2011, when the Wolf Amendment prevented all NASA cooperation and technology exchanges with China or Chinese nationals in any space-related endeavors, China, in spite of this, or perhaps because of it, has redoubled its efforts in space exploration. In a recent interview with Brian Whedon, the Director of Program Planning at the Secure World Foundation, he stated that the U.S. policy of excluding China from human spaceflight and exploration missions to the moon and beyond has not slowed its rise as a space power. He said, moreover, that worse, it may create an incentive for China to build an alternative coalition for space exploration that could undermine U.S. traditional leadership role in this area. Jeffrey Marcy, an astronomy professor at the University of California, Berkeley, called the ban completely shameful and unethical. Sir Martin Rees, the current Astronomer Royal of Great Britain, called the ban a deplorable own goal by the U.S. Aside from ethical considerations, the tangible progress made by China in the past decade has been obvious and impressive. Shenzhou-5, China's first crewed mission in space, was launched on October 15, 2003, and carried Yang Li Wei in orbit for 21 hours and made China the third nation to launch a human into orbit. Shenzhou-6, with two astronauts, and Shenzhou-7, with three astronauts, followed shortly thereafter. On the heels of the exclusionary Wolf Amendment from the United States in 2011, on September 29th of that year, China launched Tiangong-1. This module was the first step to testing the technology required for a planned space station. 
A second space lab, Tiangong-2, was launched on September 15, 2016. In recent years, the pace has only quickened. The Tiangong space station, in its final form, a larger permanent space station of modular design with a weight of approximately 60 tons, is scheduled to be completed by 2022. The station is constructed from the Tianhe-1 central module, the scientific modules Mengtian and Wentian, and the Zuntian space telescope, which is equipped with a 2-meter primary mirror equivalent to Hubble's mirror in size. This will be flown in proximity to the station and can be serviced directly from the station. The new Chinese station will be supplied via the Tianzhu cargo vehicles, which were first launched in 2017 in support of the Tiangong-2 space station. An interesting fact is that the Tiangong docking system is identical to the Russian APAS-89 system, which is used on Soyuz. This built-in compatibility allows the Tiangong station to accept Russian components and spacecraft in future should Russia decide to similarly shift its station participation away from the ISS towards further collaboration with China. Russia has already voiced plans as recently as 2020 to build its own space station after the ISS shuts down. In the area of lunar exploration, China has announced in the past that 2024 will be the target date of China's first moonwalk. Although unspecified, China has in the past declared that the building of a lunar base was a crucial step to eventual Mars and further exploration of the solar system. In 2013, China's Chang'e 3 became the first spacecraft to soft land on the moon since the Soviet Union's Luna 24 mission in 1976. In 2019, Chang'e 4, China's first lunar rover, successfully landed on the far side of the moon. This was a historic first by any nation. In 2020, China launched its Chang'e 5 and successfully returned lunar soil and rock samples from the moon to Earth. Only China, the former Soviet Union, and the United States have ever accomplished this feat. In 2020, China also launched Tianwen-1, a robotic mission to Mars. The spacecraft, at nearly 5 tons, consists of an orbiter, a deployable camera, a lander, and a rover. It is one of the heaviest probes ever launched to Mars and carries 13 scientific instruments. The orbiter and lander successfully entered Mars orbit in February 2021. Landing is currently scheduled for May of June 2021. If the landing is successful, the rover will join NASA's Perseverance rover, which successfully touched down on the Red Planet on February 18th of this year. This list of accomplishments demonstrate China's ability to quickly develop and build out its space program, and this despite a total exclusionary ban on participation with NASA or any NASA-led international efforts. China was able, after 10 years, to catch up with advanced human spaceflight programs of Russia and the United States, virtually eliminating their 50 years advanced leads. The second development in our discussion focuses on changes in the U.S. leadership position over the past decade. More importantly for the United States, the announcement of this joint venture by Russia and China of their planned lunar outposts highlights the troubling trajectory of U.S. leadership in the sphere of space exploration. A direct read-through of the world's current and future geopolitical balance of power can be seen in this new shift towards the new Chinese-Russian moment. As in politics and international relations, so too in the area of space exploration. Since the end of Apollo, the United States have maintained a continuous and commanding lead in the field of space exploration. It dominated not only the sciences and technologies that allowed for space exploration, but also in its decisive leadership position vis-à-vis -vis the direction of the worldwide effort in human spaceflight and space exploration. The International Space Station, or ISS, is the preeminent example of this leadership. Conceived originally in a 1998 memorandum of understanding between NASA and Roscosmos, the ISS was created as a multinational collaborative project involving five participating space agencies, NASA of the United States, Roscosmos of Russia, JAXA of Japan, ESA of Europe, and CESA of Canada. This new cooperative model allowed for both cost-sharing of a very expensive scientific endeavor, as well as giving the U.S. a valuable political tool for diplomatic dialogue. 
Unfortunately, the United States, who pioneered the international cooperation model with the building of the ISS space station, in recent years have increasingly linked cooperative international enterprises to the protection of its own internal domestic, military, economic, and technological interests. The obvious result is that U.S. leadership in the sphere of international cooperation on space exploration has steadily degraded as U.S.-centric policies have increasingly alienated international partners. Russia, despite chronic lack of resources and underfunding, nevertheless refused to sign the U.S.-led Artemis Accord last year for countries that wanted to participate in NASA's proposed Lunar Exploration Initiative. Artemis, like all U.S. space initiatives since 2011, would of course have barred Chinese automatically from participation. Despite growing criticism from the scientific community, the United States continued to vigorously enforce its ethically questionable policy of trying to exclude 1.4 billion people from their aspiration to participate in the international effort in space exploration. The United States' discriminative space policies have thus continued to exclude and alienate some of the largest space programs in the world outside of the United States. The justification for such exclusionary treatment is specious, and these policies demonstrably do not work. What they have managed to accomplish is to push aside major potential contributors and partners to the international effort to jointly explore space and instead promulgated a multipolar regime where countries like China and Russia are incentivized to develop their own space programs and assume independent leadership. China has developed so quickly. Its space program has effectively caught up to the U.S. 50-year lead in space technology in under a decade. This move by Russia and China to jointly establish a lunar outpost is Russia's public acknowledgement that China has become a viable alternative to partnering with NASA and the United States. Moreover, this new Sino-Russian program is presented as an international cooperative venture open to all nations and is thus a direct repudiation of the United States' increasingly unilateral, restrictive, and U.S.-centric space program. This development should be of no surprise to anyone. The United States laid the groundwork in 2011 with its counterproductive but politically expedient and popular anti-Chinese Wolf Amendment to exclude China from all participation in space exploration. Policy inertia and domestic political considerations will doubtless force the United States to continue down this exclusionary path, despite its demonstrated failure. If what the United States wanted was a new space race, then it has given itself one. The prize will be the solar system, and the outcome is anybody's guess. Thank you, friends, for coming back to the channel. If you found the discussion interesting, please give us a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.